be sure to cook. Welcome back to another episode of Be Sure to Cook. Today, we're gonna be making meatloaf. I'm making this special meatloaf for my husband and my family, and it is gonna be delicious. It is his birthday, and this is his favorite dish, and I am making a birthday dinner for my husband, and I want you all to see how easy it is to make a flavorable meatloaf. So stay tuned and let's do this together. Okay guys, I am using fresh garlic. These are garlic cloves. And why they call them cloves is because it comes in a big ball of garlic. And each garlic you can just tear out of here. And it's got so many in there, I don't know how many's in there, but it's a lot of them. And I've been using these for a while, so uh, I just started tearing out. I got about four or five that I'm tearing out. Even the little bitty baby ones they got them. So I'm gonna use fresh today. I was gonna use this in the in the jar, but I'm not probably gonna even need the jar because I didn't know I had that much of the fresh. And we're gonna start off chopping this. So the first thing you do, you on these garlic cloves, it comes like a little paper or wrap or whatever on it. So you can just actually just peel these off. And sometimes it's kind of hard, like this one came off very easily. But sometimes it's kind of hard to get these off here. And sometimes you can peel them off and sometimes you can't. So what you do is you take your knife and you kind of like hit it and it should come off very easily. Uh, I sharpened my knife up today so I'm, I'm kind of scared to hit it with the knife. I don't want to cut my hand. <laughs> And I really sharpened this knife off, so I'm really scared. So since I have fingernails, I'm gonna peel this. So let's peel this off, and let me show you how to chop these up. All right. Okay, so garlic is sticky, when, I mean, especially when it's fresh. I'm gonna cut off each little edge of the garlic because the thing about it is, guys, look at this. See, it's still got some kind of core or something on here. So that's hard. And I just want to chop that off on both ends, actually. You don't have to do the other end if you don't want to, but I do, usually like an onion. I just cut off a little part of the edge of both and discard that one that looks hard. I've already cut in that one. That one I smashed so hard that, uh, it kind of broke up. So I'm just gonna chop this up. I'm gonna be making a lot of meatloaf today because guess what? I am gonna be making, uh, I have four kids. Well, they're not kids, they're adults. Everybody's really grown. And their families, they got wives and stuff. So I'm making food for their whole family. So I decided for dad's birthday, we're having dinner, it's his favorite birthday. And since we have the COVID going on here, nobody wants to really get together and have a big celebration. And I understand that. And it's good for everybody's safety. So what I decided to do was make dinner for everybody so we can have dinner with our kids 
but it'll be over the internet. It'll be over the internet and everybody's having a wonderful dinner and a wonderful great time. We can all be all talking to each other over the internet and we'll be eating the same dinner because I'm gonna take everybody it's dinner, everybody's dinner down to their house and we can all eat and talk all on the Facebook or whatever, you know, that thing that they always use. And we can just all talk and have a good time and saying happy birthday to dad. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be making a lot of meat. So let me chop this up and we'll be right back. All right. I have diced up my garlic. And now I am going to be doing a green pepper. And I'm probably going to use all of this green pepper. So that's why I'm just going to well, cut it. Tear off the first head of it and get all these seeds out. Let's get all these seeds out and let's go from there. Okay, repeating the same thing with the red bell pepper. Okay, so I'm just cutting up the vegetables. Just gonna dice all of these. Green peppers, red peppers, and onions. I'm gonna be dicing them big and then I'm gonna dice them. To do this, you don't have to use a knife. You can just use a food processor. It'll come out the same way, but I enjoy dicing. So let's dice up the green peppers, onions, and the red bell peppers, and then we'll go from there. All right, I'm getting ready to make the mixture for the meatloaf. And we're using 18 different ingredients. I know that sounds a lot. Well, why I'm gonna be using 18 ingredients, I don't put fillers in my meatloaf. And what I mean by fillers is some people use crackers, some people use bread soaked with milk, some people use, you know, fillers. Those are what I call fillers, bread, substance. I don't. I want to taste the natural of the meat, and I use seasons to give the flavor of the meat. And this meatloaf is going to be made, put in pans, covered, put in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours or at least half of a day. So you make it the night before, go to bed when you get ready to cook it. Next day, you get up, you turn on your oven at 350 degree oven, and you just stick that baby in there. Let it cook for about 30 to 45 minutes. Watch your meatloaf and make sure it is firm. If you like yours medium rare, you can do the same, but make sure you check it. Don't let it burn and make sure it feels just right on top. All right, so let's get ready to make this mixture that I made. Okay, now I'm taking whole milk, 2%, a 1%, whatever you want. I'm doing a half of a cup of milk. Half cup, okay? Okay, I'm doing three eggs. I usually do one egg, but I am making a lot. I'm making a lot of meatloaf for my whole family. Like I said, I have four kids and, and uh, a lot of stuff here. 
that's my chopped garlic. I did four cloves that I chopped up very finely. You can put it in a food processor. I'm gonna do half of that. I got it in a little cup. I'm just gonna break that off in half and I'm gonna put half in it for right now. Put that in there, okay? Because I'm gonna need some more. That, like I said, that garlic's fresh, so fresh is very strong. So I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna be actually gonna use some, a little seasoned salt. This is a half teaspoon. I'm not even gonna use a half teaspoon. I'm just gonna get half of that half teaspoon and I'm just gonna sprinkle it in there because guess what? Uh, seasoned salt is uh, very salty, very strong. Plus I'm gonna be using some other ingredients that got salt in, so I'm using a lot of hamburger, so it's not gonna really hurt it. So I'm gonna use that half a tablespoon of seasoned garlic powder. It's got extra seasons. Half a tablespoon Mrs. Dash Blend. I love Mrs. Dash Blend. Another thing that I use, a half a tablespoon of thyme, chopped fine thyme. tablespoon I know it sounds like a lot but I'm using about four or five maybe even more pounds of meat and this uh, whole tablespoon of meat tenderizer unsalted meat tenderizer and then a half tablespoon of black pepper and I'm using ground black pepper this time the same a half tablespoon of paprika Okay, one half tablespoon of margarine flakes. Okay, and then I, I'm using one half tablespoon of Herb de Provence. All these ingredients is gonna be on, your, on the bottom of your screen when you get ready to make this recipe if you decide to. Uh, some of these uh, seasonings I have a problem saying because I have speech problems and that's a very but it's a great season okay and then not but for last I'm going to be using one half tablespoon of mint most people don't use that oh my god try it is good so I'm going to use that in there so that is all the dry seasons that I'm using and that's one the same everything's going to be at the on the bottom of your screen so let's get with the wet seasonings. One whole tablespoon of parsley. One whole tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Love it. And I'm gonna use a couple of splashes of light soy sauce. Cause I already had uh, seasoned salt in there and I didn't want to put any more. So I'm going to use one whole tablespoon of, oops, Heinz 57. Ooh, everybody loves Heinz 57. And then last but not least, I need a tablespoon of steak sauce. So we're going to use a whole tablespoon of steak sauce. Yeah, oops, well, that steak sauce just was a little bit too much. Came out flowing but one whole tablespoon of that. There you go. Okay. I got a half cup of Parmesan cheese. Parmesan goes in there. Okay, so that's the Parmesan cheese and the egg and all the stuff, ingredients, and this is uh, gonna look very nasty. So I'm just gonna mix this up really. Mmm, it smells so good. Oh, I could just smell, can you smell that? nest in my cameraman he's <laughs> sitting here and oh look at that it looks nasty but it's gonna go into your meatloaf and all this ingredients is gonna soak into all that meat overnight and you're gonna get a delicious sauce I have rinsed and drained all these vegetables that are going right into this baby like so and I mixed up all of this and I'm 
mixing it all together. I know it looks disgusting. I know it does, guys, but this is gonna sit overnight and soak up all this ingredients. And you're gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be so good once you bake this and cook it. Because this is all the stuff people put in meatloaf anyway, you know, I mean, probably lesser than what I put, you know, but I mean, I make my stuff fight. And all of this is gonna go right into here and be mixed up. So let's get the meat together. All right, I'm using, this is hamburger and I'm doing a, actually, I'm doing a 80-20 uh, hamburger and this is 80-20 and this is 3.65 pounds. But since I'm making a lot, guys, I'm doing two of these exactly the same. So let me get another pound. So I'm making a lot of meat over here. Okay. Then I'm going to think I'm going to do half of this one. So I'm doing half, half. Wait a minute. I don't want to get no plastic more. Okay. That I'm making a lot of meatloaf for my family. Okay, so there we go. So actually, I think that ham, I'm gonna see, so that was three, maybe four, maybe five pounds of hamburger. And that is 80 20. Let me go and get my spatula and get all of this out. All right, so now here's where it comes me mixing this up. So usually, you gotta get in there with your hands. And you gotta squeeze, you gotta dig, and you gotta fold everything in here. You gotta mix it up like you lost your mind. You get in here and you dig and you squeeze. You gotta mix it up, it's good. So as I'm doing this, let me mix this up. Once it's completed, incorporated, we'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I've already mixed it up. Really mixed it up, Whew, and it took some time. My hands are tarred. Okay, and if you look in here, you see all the spices, all the vegetables mixed up through and out. And I'm talking about really mixed. So now, we're gonna take these meatloaf pans and we're gonna fill these babies up. So, let's go. It's gonna duck. Big old glob of this. And I'm hoping that I do have enough. I hate when you get, you know, that uh, uh, fat and stuff that you have in the hamburger. You know, I'm gonna discard that. I do not like the way that looks. I hate getting tendons. That's what you call tendons. So, just didn't like it. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just weird like that. I'm filling this baby up and I'm smoothing it out, pressing it to the corners, to the depths of corners, and a little bit more as I go, because I want it filled. I want to make sure these are great loaves. Like I said, I'm going to be making at least three to four of these, because I'm going to make a big one too, because uh, I got some going out to my kids, plus I have people still here. So that's one. Let's get this second one together. Okay, I've got one down, this is my second one. We're gonna go ahead and fill the rest of these pans because I got a couple more besides three. And then we'll come back and see what they look like. All right, after I put the meatloafs in the pan, I whipped up a quick sauce. I'm stirring up all of my ingredients in here. And you can make any sauce of your choice. It could be a ketchup base, it can actually be a brown base. So make your sauce of your choice, which I'm doing here. And I'm gonna take some of this sauce out because some of this sauce, I'm going to be uh, putting in uh, little uh, containers so when I give these to my guests, they can have sauce to go with their pans of meatloaf. So I'm using this sauce and I'm gonna stick it on, I'm gonna put some of this on the meatloaf and I'm gonna wrap these up, put these in the refrigerator until the next day. And like I said, I'm gonna bake these for 350 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes, make sure you keep watching them. 
until they're nice and firm. Now these will shrink. They will not stay the same size as I got these in the pan. They will shrink a little bit and you would have, you'll have grease and you might have to take these out and turn it, make sure the grease is, gets out so we have no grease and your, your, your sauce will stay on there completely. These are raw, you're gonna get sauce on them. Let's go ahead and bake these, come back in 24 hours, we're gonna bake these and we'll plate it up. Okay guys, and here is our meatloaf. Came out of the oven, I let it sit for about five to 10 minutes, try to cool down. It is still kind of hot, not hot up here where I can touch it, it's not, it's warm. So I let it cool off and like I told you, it does shrink just a little bit. This meatloaf is good. Now on top here, I did put the sauce that was on top before and it had cooked. And what you can do is you can apply more sauce on top, put it back in the oven, put it on broil and get that broiled up real good and make it look really crispy and good. Take that out, let it cool a little bit more, slice this baby and there you go. This is our famous meatloaf coming your way. Okay guys, here it is. Here is my famous meatloaf and it smells good. It is still a little hot. You can see the steam coming off of it, but let this cool, let all the juices get back into your meatloaf and you'll have the perfect meatloaf. All right, I'm glad you all came today and I hope you all come back for another episode of our show. I love you all guys so much. Hey, come back, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit me up, let me know what you want me to prepare for you. Hey, I do it, just give me a ring. Hey guys, see you next time, bye.